today we're going to talk about how to belong to yourself. That is the title of today's sermon. And this topic is really near and dear to my heart um, because I'm a self-love coach and I help coach women back to belonging to themselves because so often we feel like we have to belong to everyone else. And we hustle for that belonging. You know, we're working for it all the time, 24 seven. We're putting a lot of labor and effort into doing for others, into caretaking. And we're expending a lot of precious energy because we think that it's gonna get us closer to our belonging. But what does it really get us? It gets us further from our authenticity. And the further we are from our authenticity, the further we are from true belonging. And so that's the theme of today's talk. We're also going to sprinkle in some yummy visualizations and meditations. So I'm really happy that you're here with us live or watching the replay. And I was just saying as I was trying to go live <laughs> that I have landed in Kentucky and times have been really hard. So if you're in transition, I mean, I have so much compassion and empathy for you right now. And I'm asking for you to send me lots of love and warmth and light and prayers. Um, things are just tough and they're really tough for someone I love, and I can't go into a lot of detail with that right now, but again, it's just coming back to this concept of being a caretaker and how, you know, my whole thesis statement for being a self-love coach is so true, which is you have to care for and love yourself if you genuinely wanna care for and love others. And I'm not talking about the bullshit, like fill your calendar with their needs kind of compassion and care. I'm talking about like actually have space in your body, in your heart, in your mind to listen to another person and actually like have compassion without empathizing because empathizing sometimes creates burnout, right? When we literally take on someone else's hurt as our problem to solve, that is like no good, leads you to burn out quicker than anything else because you thought you had all this stuff that you needed to deal with and now you've just added on a strata layer of this other person's issue, which they probably didn't even tell you you needed to solve, but you took it on. Anyway, caretaking and self-care and all these things we are always talking about here, aren't we? And it's so beautiful because we're in the trenches together. None of us has all the answers, but we all need each other to shed some light on some of these really complex issues that we go through, just humaning. Oh, and it's such an honor to be here with y'all. Oh, I love you so much. All right, how to belong to yourself. Pulling up my notes here. <laughs> Self-belonging. Let's start with, um, I guess I should plug a few things first before I dive on in. If you missed last week's webinar, How to Have a Better Bleed, the replay is now up. So definitely go check that out on my YouTube channel. Um, or on, in, my, in the Facebook group, Divine Feminine Self Love. And remember to donate. If you get something out of today's talk on self-belonging, you are always free to go to ellengilbert.com slash donate to make a donation any size. It really makes a difference. It supports this livelihood. It supports me as I do a lot of this emotional labor and thinking and teaching and leading. Yeah, so I really appreciate it. And I definitely want you to check out Free to Flow. 
This is my day long yoga retreat that I'm doing with my dear friend, Jamie Botian. And it's all about the menstrual cycle. So we're gonna be teaching and ritualing and workshopping and communing and yoga flowing all around the four seasons of the menstrual cycle and their implications for our physical lives, our spiritual lives, our emotional lives. It's gonna be so yummy and beautiful. We just changed the date to December 11th. I have not changed the website or anything yet. So if the August 14th date was always in your mind as inconvenient or it wasn't gonna work, I got you covered. We actually chose to reschedule this to that divine feminine winter season, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. You can attend from anywhere. It's virtual. It's a virtual day long retreat. It's gonna be so, so good. And you can find out all the details at my website, ellengilbert.com. So excited for that. And the last thing I will plug is to say there are still slots open for my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. This is my only program where I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and it's called Become Your Own Soulmate. And it's really about a lot of the themes we're talking about today, belonging to yourself. So if today's talk resonates with you, if you have this deep down feeling that you would like some mentorship, some support, some space holding as you begin to reweave self-belonging, as you begin to take these tender, brave steps into the darkness, into your own wilderness, you do not have to do it alone. You do not have to do it alone, okay? This is what I do. <laughs> this is all I do. This is what I was born to do. So please reach out about Become Your Own Soulmate. You can find more information at my website, ellengilbert.com. This is my 12 week coaching program and the price is going to be increasing soon. So at this time, you can still get it at the 997 level and that price is going to be raising really, really soon, like within the next month. So I really encourage you, if you're interested at all, to book your free clarity call with me, 30 minutes, and DM me if you want the link. Um, we just find 30 minutes together to see if it would be a good fit for you. And yeah, there's value guaranteed from those free 30 minutes. So definitely book that clarity call. Let's talk more about becoming your own soulmate. I would love to support you on that path. Okay, beautiful one. So let's start with a check-in. I want you to ask yourself right now, maybe closing the eyes, taking a deep breath in, letting it go. In what ways have you hustled for your own belonging? Or are you currently hustling for your belonging? If you don't know what that means, maybe inviting images from your family of origin from as young as preschool, elementary school, times where you learned what belonging was and what you had to do to get it. Maybe envisioning this chasm opening up between your authentic self and the self projection that you believed would get you closer to that warm fire of belonging. Maybe now seeing yourself in middle school, high school, In what ways did you cut off parts of who you truly were? In order to belong 
seeing yourself in college, the workplace, in friendships, in romantic partnerships, in all of your communities and all of your roles. What have you done to belong? open to any shame that might rear its ugly head here. I'm going to pour some soothing compassion over that shame. Maybe putting a hand on the heart. You're simply witnessing what's already been done, you are safe. Mm, precious one. I'm so sorry for all these times within myself, within you, within all of us. Take a deep breath in, let it go, <sighs> open your eyes, welcome back. Yeah, we just practice self-witnessing, self-compassion, we just experienced grief, but grief held in a loving, compassionate container that was all provided by you, by yourself. We just practice self-belonging in just a couple of minutes there, didn't we? So beautiful. Oh, and I forgot to light the candle and now my headband's popping off my head. <laughs> okay, let's definitely do that. I got some new, I don't know if anyone uses resin incense or charcoal based incense, um, but I got this at my favorite metaphysical shop in Albuquerque before I moved. Shout out Blue Eagle. Um, and I totally do not know how to light the charcoal. So if anyone has tips, please let me know. Um, I try, it looked like it was sparking and lighting and then I put the like resin incense on top of it and it stopped and I even have like the sand down in the cauldron they told me to get, but alas, I will have to figure it out and, um, and we shall see. I'll update you, <laughs> but I'm going to just light my lovely lavender eucalyptus candle here. If you have a candle or something you'd like to burn or smudge, feel free setting your intention for self-belonging today. And so it is. And so it is, beautiful ones. Okay. So let's just get into it, right? We are human. Humaning is hard. I already said that, but to be human is to be fully animal and fully divine. It is like to have all these earthly needs because we're made of carbon and we are animals and we will die and to have all this divine consciousness. And that's a lot to hold, right? Because it's like to at once hold the fact that we are capable of tapping into limitless, collective godness, like consciousness and wisdom and eternal higher self. Like we can tap into that in our meditations, whenever we truly, genuinely love another or ourselves 
when we're creative, we tap into that divine nature, right? But we also are constantly made aware of our humanness, our animal nature. You know, we get sick, we die, we lose everyone we love. We experience stress, we experience unbelonging, which feels like death. So it's really hard to be human. <laughs> I know it's so obvious, but how often do you actually like give yourself compassion just because you're human and you're here and sometimes it's hard. When you do that, you're practicing self belonging. So do that even more because we all have this belonging wound and I think it's at the core of all of our suffering. It really is. I mean, what are we doing all day, every day? We're trying to make sure that we're worthy. Worthy of what? Of belonging. Like not even worthy of resources to survive but worthy of this intrinsic feeling of collectivity, community, relationality, this feeling of being good enough, worthy enough, capable enough, beautiful enough to belong in collective, in community with others. And I've talked a lot about the shame of loneliness, the crippling scarcity of isolation, of saying I need help in a capital capitalist culture that says you have to do it all perfectly and alone. Yeah, it's so brave to admit to your longing for belonging. It's so brave. And it's also really smart because we need each other. Um, our previous uh, Surgeon General had this famous quote where he said that isolation was more dangerous to human health than like smoking a pack a day or something, whatever it was. Um, and that was of course pre-COVID. Yeah. So I think now we're all confronted with isolation and loneliness and belonging in these like new ways. We've really got to kind of solve this um, because it's killing us. Like it's really wounding us, right? And it's so multifaceted. Like we need each other physically. Our ancestors knew that they had the village, right? Our pre-human ancestors knew that and know that. They have this pack animal mentality. Well, guess what? So do we still in our brains have that. Only now, just as our stress can get um, misinterpreted by the nervous system as um, life or death, so too can loneliness. So too can the fear of not belonging to the group, the fear of not fitting in, as someone very close to me calls it, the fear of being the laughing stock, which I think is so interesting. The fear of being awkward, saying the wrong thing, wearing the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. Um, the fear of failure, foff. <laughs> Uh, which is really just a fear of unbelonging. Any fear we can trace back to unbelonging. FOMO, the fear of missing out. What are we missing out on? Yes, the beautiful experience, the joy that life has to offer, but also really what you'll find under the FOMO most of the time, I believe, is fear of not belonging. You know, when you see pictures being posted of a party, and people you thought were your friends are there, but you weren't invited. That is like the ultimate unbelonging wound feeling. That's like what we're most afraid of. And to our primitive brain, it's like, yeah, I'm not gonna get enough resources, I'm gonna die. But even to our evolved, like conscious brain, hi Allison. <laughs> It's like on another level, 
the unbelonging is on this whole new existential level of I have to do this really hard humaning and who's going to do it with me? Who's going to witness me? Right? Who's going to hold space for me? Who's just going to be there <laughs> um, as I go through this? So those are like the multifaceted levels of belonging, unbelonging, and all of these ways that we try to get our belonging. That's what we're going to really talk about today. It's all about self-belonging because if you want to belong to yourself, you cannot abandon yourself. That's number one. Stop abandoning yourself. How do we abandon ourselves? We judge ourselves. We cut ourselves off at the needs. Not the knees, but the needs. <laughs> yeah. And we push down and stifle all of the grief that is part and parcel of being an awake conscious human. So stop abandoning yourself. Stop running from yourself if you truly want to belong to yourself. And I know this is like the core desire that's even underneath the desire to belong to others, to belong to community. Really, when we get down to it, it's the desire to belong to ourselves. Really, that's what's underneath. We're all just a bunch of projection machines, aren't we? That thing that we really want to give ourselves, we trick our mind into thinking we have to get outside of ourselves. Because in some ways that would be easier. So let's start with self-knowledge. This is my favorite kind of first step because it's so easy. Curiosity. Can we just bring some curiosity to ourselves, to our experiences, to the present moment? Curiosity is such a safe playful entry point, isn't it? And what I love about curiosity is it is naturally free of judgment. It's just open. It's like, hmm, I wonder what this is about. I wonder what this thought is about. I wonder what's underneath that thought. Or I wonder where I picked that up. You know, it's not jumping to the inner critic, or as we talked about last week, the inner imposter of you're bad, you're wrong, you're horrible. <laughs> like there's no judgment in curiosity. And curiosity gives way to awareness, like this greater awareness of our experience, which gives way to acceptance which is a really good foundation for self-belonging. You can practice this today with your thoughts. You can practice it with the choices that you will make over the next week. You can start really small with curiosity and really foster it and nurture it by the absence of judgment to see it grow into this beautiful acceptance. You know, this is just the way things are. And I think so often we're resistant of acceptance because we think it means complacency. And we think we can't accept ourselves and grow. I hear this from my clients all the time. Like, how can I accept myself when I'm here in coaching to grow, to change something? And the answer is, you cannot change anything or grow until you accept it. The only way out is through, y'all. I will keep saying it. The only way out is through. Anything beyond acceptance is delusion. Anything you're not accepting, you are being delusional about. You're resisting. You're saying it shouldn't be this way. Well, guess what? It is. It is. What are we going to, how are we going to go from here? If there's something you feel that you are hating about yourself, can you switch it and flip it? Do I hate this about myself? 
Or am I starting to see how this part of me needs my compassion most of all? I think another reason we are so resistant to accepting ourselves is because we have to accept, right? Sovereignty is a two-way street. We have to accept that if we are worthy and good just as we are, then so is everyone else. And that means we can't judge because non-judgment of the self is the only way we get to non-judgment of others is the only way we stop gossiping. We stop, you know, blaming others. We stop nitpicking others life decisions or pretending we're better or worse than others. Cause they're both judgment. So to accept ourselves, we have to accept others. That's hard to let go of. And then it's also to grieve. To accept yourself is to grieve all those years you spent hustling for your belonging. Because you have to look back and say, well, shit, that was for nothing because I always belonged. I was always worthy. You know? And that's, that's a hard hard thing but it's also really beautiful and I remember when I had my spiritual awakening a few years ago through my Buddhism journey which I talk about a lot there was a lot of grief there was a lot of looking back over my years in evangelical Christianity in my years um, my professional life like everything I had done to try to be perfect, to try to project a certain image, because it was all to try to belong. So maybe you felt that a little bit, like, well, if I fully let go, kind of like ego death, right? If I fully let go that my identity is tied to this sense of hustle, in order to belong, then that means I have to let go of who I was for so long. And for some of us, for most of our lives, I mean, as hard as it was for me in my like mid to late twenties, it is really hard for some of my clients in their forties, fifties, sixties. They've got so much more heavy lifting around re rewiring the brain and nervous system, but also grieving so much of their lives spent in the hustle. But don't let that fear keep you from accepting. Don't let that fear keep you from self-belonging because ultimately it's about the time we have left, which none of us know how long that is, at least in this lifetime. So accept yourself, number one. <laughs> really long roundabout way of saying accept yourself. Yeah, and allow the grief work to be part of that process. Um, we are reading some of us in my the community I'm a part of. It's Becca Piastrelli's community. It's called Hearthfire. We are reading this amazing book that inspired my sermon topic for today, Belonging by Tokopa Turner. Highly recommend. And I'm gonna be reading a little bit from it today. But she says you have to follow your grief to get to your authenticity. And I've been thinking about that a lot. Follow your grief. Like whatever grief you're resisting, it probably has some huge lesson to teach you. And it's so tied to this work of self-belonging and acceptance. Just open to it. The only way out is through. So what happens when we feel we don't belong? I hope that this like framework I'm gonna lay out gives you clarity and doesn't like confuse you further. <laughs> the work of every teacher. This is how I see it, right? We look outside of ourselves for our worthiness. That's what we do when we should be looking inside of ourselves. 
and we look inside of ourselves for the problems, for the blame, for the judgment, when we should look outside of ourselves. And I don't mean outside, like blame others for all your problems, but I mean open to the ways that culture, your family of origin, your biology has shaped some of these dynamics. That can be really helpful for accepting some of this so that we can belong to ourselves a little bit more. Yeah. So we look, number one, we look outside of ourselves for worthiness. And that's where the hustling comes in. Yes, Allison, follow the grief. Oh, so good. We, we hustle for our worthiness. We're looking out. We're like, if I, do, if I work this hard and I sweat this much and I produce this much, what's getting reflected back to me? Usually words like, oh, you're such a hard worker. You know, you're so dedicated. You're so selfless. A lot of women, a lot of mothers hear that one a lot. Um, and those are like the signals that Yes, my hustling is getting me this belonging that I want. But is that the belonging that we want? You know, um, a lot of this was inspired by a really great conversation I had with my mama yesterday. And I don't want to like reveal too much, but um, it was basically around this this whole idea of building your identity on this foundation of caretaking and what inevitably happens when you can't be there to caretake, what inevitably happens when you get older, you lose your energy or you lose your money or you lose the means you once had because guess what, impermanence, we are always shifting. So ego builds its house on these shifting sands of impermanence. But it holds on for dear fucking life and creates a lot of suffering along the way. And when we base our worthiness on others' expectations, others' needs, others' perception of us and our roles, that's exactly what we're doing. We're building that house of identity on these extremely volatile shifting sands. And we're saying, I'm only as good as I am able to like ride this train to the end, you know, to the end of the line. I'm going to hold on for dear life. And I'm just going to give, 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 serve, 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 be, 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 everything for everyone until there's nothing left. And I say all this to say, underneath that, there is like this core gaping whole wound of belonging, like true authentic belonging that we talked about in the beginning. And that is certainly not what we're getting as a result of depleting ourselves, right? And I mean, just bringing it back to the example with my mom, I don't think she'll mind me saying this, but it was like, when you hustle that much, you know, what is it really for? Who is it really for? She was like, it's for me. It's to me, the kids, her adult children and grandchildren coming home feels like love. And if they weren't to come home, it would feel like a rejection of her. But when we like dug a little deeper, it was like, well, when do you actually feel that sense of I am accepted, I am loved, I belong here? And she was like, I don't because instead it's like, oh, well, they're only here because they need my support or they need, you know, a roof over their head or they need food or whatever it is. It's kind of like, you know, in a way we shoot ourselves in the foot. We build our whole identity around what we do for others, but then we have to question, well, who really loves me? 
and not my role. And we don't even know who we are. When we go down this path for so long, and I have a lot of clients who are mothers, and I mean, I'm on this big mother kick because I'm thinking a lot about it, um, and the way patriarchy conspires and all of this. But we go down this path for so long that we truly do lose sight of who we are. And it's how do we have self-belonging if there's no self-awareness? Like we can't even accept ourselves because we've lost sight of who we even are. But it's never too late. It is never too late to recognize and wake up from this trance. Right, Tara Brock calls it the trance of unworthiness. We're on autopilot hustling for our belonging because we've done it for so long and it's become ingrained and entrenched in our neural pathways and in our nervous systems. But also because we're still trying to get safe. That primitive part of us is still trying to find its pack. And in an isolated capitalist culture, that is still in the depths of, or in some places coming out of a global pandemic that left us even more isolated, um, it can feel like an uphill battle. And make no mistake, self-belonging is not the be all end all. We still need each other. We still need community. We still need authentic witnessing and meeting of our needs outside of just ourselves and that's all beautiful and it all belongs and it really helps when you're doing the self-belonging work in tandem you know and finding the therapist finding the coach finding the community finding the teacher whatever it is that is all part and parcel of belonging to yourself because you're finding those spaces where you get to actually be yourself. Like not some projection of who you should be. Like actually you. Not for anyone's approval or validation or for anyone's service or comfort. But just because you are here and you deserve to be you. So that's what happens when we feel we don't belong. We kind of pass off our needs like a hot potato to anyone with an open hand. You know, we look, we project and look outside of ourselves for the proof of our worthiness. We hustle for our belonging. And then we look in us to say, well, it's because I'm bad that I am alone and I am isolated and I am lonely and all of these things. And it becomes a cycle that we really get caught in. So what if instead we flipped it? Yeah. We look inside for our own worthiness. And I mean, you have to nourish that every single day in the morning or whenever, but carving the space to sit in your light and your goodness with your higher self. I don't know if you can hear this, but the trash truck is so loud outside of my house right now. I apologize. <sighs> we have to nurture our worthiness and sit with that higher self every day or whenever we forget, whenever we remember that we forgot. Look for the proof of your own worthiness, your own sovereignty, your own divinity. Why should you trust yourself? Look for the evidence. If you attended homecoming, um, you remember we looked for evidence that we are worthy of trust. Yeah. So keep collecting those lists of reasons why you are good. Because believe me, this negativity bias is so ingrained as a survival mechanism that we've got to counteract it with intentional positivity intentional self-gratitude, intentional higher self-time. 
Mm, they're taking away what we no longer need. Yeah. <laughs> the trash truck. Yeah, exactly. Come and get it. Um, exactly. Yes. So, okay. Love this. What questions do we have around fostering our worthiness? I think that is where it starts and then we build, right? We build onto it the sovereignty. We start acting like we're trustworthy and we find that we are. We start taking brave leaps of faith and we find that we don't have to abandon ourselves because we can trust ourselves. We can stay with the grief. We can stay with the discomfort. We can have our own backs, yeah? We can be here for whatever life throws at us. We don't have to give our power away. We are sovereign and we are divine. Fully human, fully divine all the damn time. Okay. And notice what happens in social settings. I mean, maybe like me, many of you are starting to feel a lot of anxiety around attending parties again or gatherings or just being at the grocery store without a mask on if you're vaccinated like whatever it is i think we're all kind of feeling that fresh vulnerability again and just notice what's coming up like what is the fear how will you be with it and not abandon it and so often it's a hand on the heart and it's saying, oh, this is here. This is here because I'm trying to get safe. No. And then it's like, I love you. I love this part of me that's trying to keep me safe. I want to be safe. I want to survive. And everything's okay. Everything's really okay. Like what mantras do you need to repeat? All right, moving on. I'm gonna read a little bit from Belonging by Toka Pa Turner. Um, and if you attended my sermon on the mother at the summer solstice, we talked and we practiced spiritual reparenting, which is this idea that you can be your own mother yeah you can be the mother you didn't have or the mother you still need the mother you would hope to be to your child someday you can be the child and the mother and that's really what we're doing when we're re-belonging to ourselves we get to be the one who needs the belonging and the one who provides the belonging so there's this beautiful duality and if you've been working with me for a while you know that I'm all about shifting our nervous system and shifting culture at the same time, but it starts with the individual. It starts with the universe inside of you. So when I read this quote that I'm about to read, I was just so happy and it just felt so in alignment with this work we're doing. She says, though we are led to think the opposite, I believe the self is the macrocosm through which outside culture is shaped. So rather than thinking of inner work as selfish, we can see it as a service to the cultural consciousness. In order to heal the scarcity wound created by a lack of nurturing, both in our families and our culture, we must learn to become the loving mother we never had. This remothering is the ongoing practice, tremendously helped by a mentor of learning to care for your body's needs, validating and expressing your feelings even when they're unpopular, holding healthy boundaries, supporting your life choices, and most of all, being welcoming towards all that is yet unsolved in your heart. I love this. I love these words from Choco Pa. I mean, think about it. Like supporting your life choices, that one really stuck out to me. I was like, damn, do I support my own life's choices? I question them a lot. <laughs> I question them, but what would a good, good mother parent be? It would be someone that does support our life's choices 
that holds healthy boundaries, that both validates and expresses your feelings, their feelings, you know, and cares for the body and welcomes what is unsolved in the heart. What does this mean? This means we don't fucking fix. We do not fix. We hold. We allow. We become comfortable with the uncomfortable. Because really, when we make the unsolved not belong, we suffer so much. As Tara Brock said, life is not a problem to be solved, but an experience to be inhabited. You know? I mean, I talk about hustling for our belonging, and that, of course, is adapted from Brene Brown, who says, hustling for our worthiness. But we're also problem solving for our belonging, like left and right. This is the nature of the mind. This is what your brain does naturally. And you can interrupt it a bit with pauses, sacred pauses, space to make decisions, space to react. Um, you don't have to problem solve what is unsolved in your heart. That's a beautiful way to say hold space. And it's really what we all want, isn't it? We just want a friend to sit with us on the couch and hold our hand and be like, yeah, being human is hard. And I don't know, I don't know either. You know, maybe we should cry about all we don't know. I mean, I talked about grief before. I've been going through a lot of grief lately around <laughs> growing up and like being an adult. I mean, I'm 31, but for some reason it just occurred to me that like being an adult does not mean having it all figured out. And that has a tremendous amount of grief behind it for me. Unsolved, unsolved problem of the heart. Yeah. So all of this need, this need for space holding and boundaries, what we will call mothering as a catch all, we project onto everyone else. Maybe your, your literal biological mother, maybe that's the one you're projecting it onto. Maybe you're putting people on a pedestal who really have no business being there because no one does. This is all false belonging. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about how we project our need for belonging onto others, but let's talk about how we fit in instead of belong. How do you fit in? You cut off parts of yourself. Tokopa talks about this a lot, so I'm definitely borrowing from her. Um, and I like to say we cut ourselves off at the needs. I think this is the way women especially are in culture to do this, to fit in instead of belong, um, is to silence completely our needs, let alone our fucking desires. And I do this all the time in my marriage and in my relationships. I've noticed like, well, I'll just stay quiet because there's not enough room there's not enough space for us all to fall apart. You know, there's not enough air in the room for me to also have a need. So I'll just bury it deep down. And yeah, do y'all do this? It sucks. It really hurts. We cut ourselves off at the needs because we think our needs will certainly never belong. And they're probably the thing creating our unbelonging. So let's just cut them right there, cut them off. And this is like horrible trauma that we do to ourselves because we're again reinforcing the idea that we are the problem and 
we're too much. We're too much. We're somehow too much and we're not enough. And we're just bad and wrong, you know? And it just becomes this feedback loop of self unbelonging. So in what ways have you cut yourself off at the knees? I mean, maybe let's just take a pause. Closing the eyes. Maybe bringing a hand to the heart and a hand to the belly. Maybe it was today or this week or this month, this cycle. It's bringing to mind a need that you have and did not voice. or a part of yourself you did not acknowledge or express. Or worse, you judged. Just see all of these parts returning to you. Maybe you see them as birds flying home to your heart. Or literal parts of your body being placed back where they go. Feeling the outline of your body becoming more and more solid, whole, the feeling in your extremities returning, buzzing, as you integrate each and every one of these parts with each breath. and a slight smile at the lips. And a gentle greeting, you can say hello. I see you. I can hold you now. You belong right here. It's returning to wholeness as the sirens blare outside my house. reintegrating all parts of you that you have abandoned remothering yourself rebelonging to yourself you can hold this All you needed was a little space, a little time. Take a deep breath in and let it go. Great job, great job. Beloved. You can hold this, you can hold these hearts. The more we practice this on our own, the better equipped we are 
to not abandon and not cut off parts of ourselves in those moments when that awkwardness arises, that sense that we should be more polished, we should be whatever we should be to belong more. We have to strengthen this muscle and that gives way to our authenticity, feeling safe to come out. Because guess what? You can't belong authentically if you're pretending to be someone else. It's not you. Whatever love you feel you're getting as a result of changing yourself, is that authentic love? Whatever love and belonging you feel you're getting as a result of only identifying with your roles and what you do, is that real belonging? I mean, I'm genuinely curious. If we want authentic relationships, and I do, I really do, we've got to be authentic whole people. It's so scary to show up as your true whole self, but it is so worth it. And yeah, people are gonna fucking judge you. <laughs> It's what people do, but better they judge you than you judge yourself. That does psychic damage on a level that is very hard to repair, but can be repaired. So if any of this resonates, if you're ready to be your own soulmate, to have your own back, whatever life throws at you, please reach out to me for your free session. Would love to have you and become your own soulmate to my only coaching program. There are a few spots left. Would love to work with you in this capacity. We all need someone to talk to about this stuff. We really do. And someone to hold us accountable. So if that feels right and resonant, reach out to me, beautiful ones. All right, go forward, belong to yourself, mother yourself, love yourself, and let me know how it goes. I am sending you so much love. Oh, we can blow out our candle. We are still connected in this circle. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>